video, we're going to be learning about the components of blood. Mammals have a closed circulatory system. What this means is that all the blood vessels are actually contained inside the body and it will circulate. So it's actually a closed system. So it's all circulated and recycled in the body. This is made up of the heart, which is your pump, the blood and the blood vessels, which are your transport system. So your blood vessels are like your roads, okay? And the blood is like the car that will get you somewhere. You have seen the importance of temperature of the blood in maintaining a stable body temperature in an endotherm such as a mammal. The blood has an important role in distributing heat throughout the body. The blood has a vital role distributing other substances as well. As the main transport system of the body, the watery liquid, which is called blood, transfers material from where they are absorbed or produced to other places in the body from where they need to be removed. Now the components of blood. These cells make up about 45% of the blood in humans. So they're the red blood cells and the blood cells in particular. The rest of the blood is a liquid called plasma, which makes up 55% of the total blood. So in within the 45% of your blood cells, so this is your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and your platelets, 99% of red blood cells are of that 45%. So of the 45%, 99% are red blood cells. Less than 1% are white blood cells and less than 1% are platelets. You do need to know these three terms. So the red blood cells have a function in the body and their function is to transport around oxygen and carbon dioxide. White blood cells are known for protecting our body because they fight off infection and they make up your immune system. So they make white blood cells to remember a disease the next time you get it. You'll never really catch, or you shouldn't catch a disease more than once because we actually create white blood cells, which are memory cells in the body that will remember that particular disease. Platelets are a part of the blood that actually helps your blood to clot. Um, and it only needs to clot when it's when you've been cut or when your skin has been opened and you're releasing blood. So for that reason, platelets are less than 1%. Blood components. Now, if you were to spin a tube of blood um, in an instrument called a centrifuge, in university, if you get to use this, there, what it is, it's a machine that spins around really fast. And if you were to get a vial of blood, the blood actually separates into its components. And you can actually see the cell fragments here in these tubes, you can see it's dark red at the bottom and yellow at the top. Now, the dark red bit is the actual red blood cells and the 45%, that's red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The top bit is the blood plasma, which you can see up there, and it has like a yellowy type liquid. Now, plasma is sticky. It's a yellow liquid and it's slightly salty liquid that makes up 55% of the blood. If you were to give blood, you can actually give blood every three months and you can give whole blood. What does that mean? You're giving literally all of your blood. You're not actually taking anything back in. But if you were wanted to donate more than that, you can. And what they actually do is you can go in every few weeks. And when you do that, you can take away blood plasma. When you take blood plasma, it's the salty liquid and they actually give you back your red blood cells and the, the blood part of your, your blood. So you get back your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and your platelets. You're only giving blood plasma. So it is made up of your blood plasma. It's made of about 90% of water plus various other substances carried in solution. Plasma contains salts as ions in solution as well as large plasma proteins. It also, these salts and pro proteins play a role in maintaining the pH of your blood. Many substances are transported in the plasma and their amount in the plasma changes as the blood circulates. So as your blood pumps from your heart, obviously your blood's going to have lots of oxygen. If it goes through your digestive system, it might be picking up food substances along the way, such as sugars. Now, if when it goes through to your cells and delivers to your cells, you might actually be delivering oxygen, but you're also taking in carbon dioxide and you're taking in waste from those cells. So your plasma and your blood 
concentrations are always changing with how much waste is in your blood, for example. So these include waste materials such as urea and carbon dioxide, products of digestion such as amino acids and sugars and hormones. So hormones is also released in your blood. Like I said, blood is your transport mechanism to deliver things to cells and to target tissues in your body. Red blood cells are also known as erythrocytes and they're disc shaped and biconcave. They're thinner at the center than at the edges. So they're kind of like a donut shape, but without the hole in the middle. Red blood cells contain the pigment hemoglobin. Their function is to transport respiratory gases, particularly oxygen. When hemoglobin carries oxygen, it's called oxyhemoglobin and it's carried around the body. When it um, carries carbon dioxide, it's carbaminohemoglobin. Red blood cells remain in the blood for about three months and are then destroyed in the liver or the spleen. Every second, about one million red blood cells are being replaced by new ones. And that sounds like a lot, but one millimeter of blood contains five to six million red blood cells. Now, if you were to look at blood cells under a microscope, this is what it would look like underneath the microscope slide. You can see here that all these little circular round things, and you can see it's lighter in the center, it's because it's thinner in the center, all of those are red blood cells. Everything else, so you can see that over there we've got platelets, and you can see these large, huge um, white blood cells, and all of them are different names. So we have different types of white blood cells that do different functions in the body. So you can see erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells, monocytes, white blood cells, neutrophils, and lymphocytes. They're just a couple of the white blood cells that exist. There are between 4,000 and 12,000 white blood cells in one mil of human blood. Even though red blood cells are more abundant, white blood cells are much larger. White blood cells are the cells that help the body fight infection. There are different, a number of different types and subtypes of white blood cells which each have different roles within the body. So these are five different types of white blood cells up here. Two important types of white blood cells are phagocytes and lymphocytes. The phagocytes, and I want you to think of Pac-Man here, okay? So Pac-Man comes along and it eats things, and these are like phagocytes. So phagocytes, the basophil, neutrophil, and eosinophil white blood cells surround and ingest bacteria, foreign bodies, and dead cells, and these foreign substances at areas of infection or injury. So when you injure yourself, if you were to cut, be cut, or if you say, for example, your shoe keeps on rubbing and you form a blister, those places, white blood cells actually leak from the blood and it actually goes to that area of infection. And the white blood cells are in concentration and they fight infection. If you actually find that you don't clean the area properly, if it gets red within a few days, that's actually a sign of infection. So you should get that checked out. If you do get a blister from a shoe, for example, or if you've um, got a burn, that blister is filled with pus. Now that pus is filled of dead white blood cells. So when you pop that blister, you're actually getting rid of, there's foreign particles, but white blood cells that have done their job to save you or to save you from getting an infection, and they're now dead, so they don't perform any other function, and they can be released when the blister is popped. Now lymphocytes are a different white blood cell and they act specifically against foreign material. They make antibodies which help the body's defense against disease. Monocytes recognize and mark cells that are foreign to the body to be destroyed by lymphocytes. So lymphocytes actually can destroy things and monocytes don't actually destroy it. They put a marker on something that's foreign to be destroyed later on by the lymphocytes. In summary, Transport in multicellular animals is necessary to move nutrients and waste around the body. This occurs in a watery medium, medium, the blood. There are four main components of blood and you do need to know them and the amount of them in the blood. So there's the red blood cells, the white blood cells and the platelets that makes up of 45% of your blood. And then there's your blood plasma, which makes up of 55% of your blood. This concludes looking at the components in blood.